Happy Friday, everybody! How are ya? You all high? Everybody in my neighborhood, everybody high. You high, Eddie? If everybody's high. You high, you look a little high. You feeling high? Your mouth is getting dry when you high? Your mouth get dry. Boy, what a show we got today. I gotta tell you, we had... So, you might have noticed yesterday, you heard about MPX being bought by Ianthus Business Combination. In the tradition of like real business newscasts everywhere, today we had the CEO of the acquirer, the CEO of the acquiree, and a hedge fund who was invested in both to opine on the value accretively and otherwise of the entire transaction. Now is this, we're getting out of control here. I thought we were not supposed to be a serious business channel ad. Huh. Anyway, so we have Scott Boy, CEO of MPX, is here today. We have Hadley Ford, CEO of Ianthus, is here today. We have Todd Harris, who's C C Chief Investment Officer of CB1 Capital in New York. George Scores has stopped in today from Liberty Health Sciences. We're going to have Anthony Durkach here in, oh, about 13 minutes to talk about huge and his new Is deal. Anthony coming in? And Anthony's going to be sitting right there, Ed. I like it. Yeah, I know. About time. Huge. We're going to have huge and pump here. <laughs> There's just a lot of... Just, just but leave sure, it alone. What, leave word, it alone what, word, what word comes first? Well, is it huge then pump or pump then huge? Huge came know. before pump. Because pump's I'm not, not so sure. I yet. think I think if you pump first, huge will come second. No, I think you're confusing pump with dump. Okay. Huge pump. dump. But there's no dump here. You know why it's called pump? Because it's an oil play. Get it? International extractions and oil play. Pump oil. Come on. Pump oil, Pumps oil, in the oil, oil business? Or hash oil. Pump oil. Ash oil. Ash oil. <laughs> Oh. Boy, oh boy, if we were doing a charade show, how are you today, Ed? I didn't, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see much of you last night. What happened to you? You went home early, didn't you? What, did you go to London or something? Uh, Do you remember? I don't remember what happened last night. <laughs> see, isn't this a great thing? Now we've got booze and drugs. Oh, now Jesus. we're really not going to remember. You know, you, know you, you can go out now, you can have an actual toke. Mm -hmm. Anywhere that people are smoking cigarettes. And Anywhere. It's, it's like, hey, I oh, know. hello, Mr. Policeman. I know. How you doing there? We're going to, uh, we're wanna, just. Want to toke? We're having can a, a policeman smoke on the job? I don't think Not so. Not on the job. No. But you can't smoke on the job anywhere. Like, technically. Well, unless can you have job. a coffee on the job? You can have a coffee and a smoke when it's your break. But you can't have a coffee and a smoke when you're supposed to be working. At least, I don't know. That's, that's okay. the way I Okay, do. let's see. Anyway, so huge. Let's take out huge today. So, uh. Last at, oh, what's going on with my compute? To, oh, I dimmed it because I was washing the screen. Boy, you dimmed here it. I am all unprepared again, but uh, let's pull up the charts. Cannabis, boy, oh boy, just right behind the eight ball. Let's pull up the NDI. Oh boy, right behind the eight ball. There's the NDI. Okay, here we go. It's a three quarters red day and it's a 25% green day. Jesus. I know. So what's going on in the... Uh, the CSC is up 1.26%. Something's up. Something's up. Something's up. Something's up. Something's up big time. Hey, something's up. But okay, sums up. The, uh, but why, how is it that the large cap index is down 4.24% and the, and the CSE index yeah. is up 1.26? Is that what we would call a uh, stratification you, of you, market interest? I don't know if I want to get that uh, technical. Whoa, but you're the technical guy. Come okay. on. Whoa. What I, do you mean I you don't want say, to get technical? I would say that. Uh, Let's get technical, technical. I want to get technical with you. You know, oh, you, should, uh, you should go to India and uh, be a snake charmer. <laughs> now, 4% yeah. now, coming off this, uh, the big cap yeah. makes me think. So here, I'm just looking at this. Just yeah, okay. Here comes some I'm, technical I'm looking mumbo at jumbo. That that the, that spike that was at legalization point. That's uh, for all intents and purposes that's ground zero. Ground zero, you say? And so, oops, sorry. Oops, ground zero has disappeared on me. Uh oh. So uh, you know what? Let's see what happens if we move to the side here, and then you know if up. Okay, be bullish as hell. But if we move off here 
and we start to deteriorate a bit, I don't think that's good. So basically you're saying if the stock starts heading up, it's going up. It's going up. But if up. it starts to go down, it's going down. It's going down. That's exactly what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. But I, this is... You, you know what? You, you, you're a quick study. There's no question. The you mystery of technical analysis just still eludes me. I, I just don't, don't, I don't. understand. Um, I'm... The hell I thought today on? was a day where the markets should have rallied in the marijuana space. Look at that. All, all the big stocks are down. No, we, now, weed's already come down from 76 bucks. Yeah, but it was 76 bucks. So who's not going to take briefly, that profit briefly. off the table? Well, you know, I think that here you want to hear my prediction based on fundamental macro market, not technical mumbo jumbo. Wait a minute now. <laughs> if you're going to call what I do mumbo jumbo, then I have to take exception. To well, what that's you the call idea here. Fundamental. Yeah, well, okay. that's our shtick. Okay. okay. I insult you, you insult me. It's all in good fun. We agree to disagree. I say, I say, there, there are very, really few fundamentals that you can hang your hat on here. Well, unless you're a crystal ball gazing unless master a, of the universe. Unless you're a technical analyst. <laughs> right. Okay, well, again. There's the screen. You tell me. Where's the action? Uh, well, I'll tell you. I think what's going to happen now, in the absence of any more macro catalysts, so macro catalyst being an event like Constellation buying Canopy, like a big chunk of Canopy, basically taking over the company, but the media refuses to sort of adopt that position. But it's yeah. hard to look at Canopy now and not think of it as a subsidiary Jeez. of Constellation. You mind putting your shoes back a bit? Uh, What's just going they're, on? They're too bright. I can't. Oh, you like those, eh? No, I didn't say I like on my hey, shoes. Look at those bad like boys, them. eh? Didn't say I like Those them. are Vans all the it, way from... You know what? I thought... I bought Vans because I was in Vancouver, and I thought, well, I'm going to bring back a souvenir of Vancouver. I bought some Vans. Look at that. Vans. Then Midas letter yellow. I had to buy them. <laughs> That's my family color, yellow. No kidding. Were you a bunch of yellow-bellied sap suckers in a previous life? Yeah, well, you know, they say if you're yellow, you're chicken. <laughs> right? So you're chicken man. Chick, chick, chick. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. Remember that? Hey, Chicken look at man? look at we just just taken off here. What do you mean just taken off? Well, I think it was down to sixty one earlier, wasn't it? <laughs> this is a static chart, and I don't think you'll see any movement oh, okay. in prices while we're looking at it. Okay. However, if you'd prefer, we Let, could pull up put, something put a little more uh, real. Real. You know what? Can I ask you to put up the? Uh, How about we go look at some real percentage changes? Action. Let's look. Let's. let's, let's you want to look at weed? Yes. Okay. Here we go, Ed. Just please my friend, Ed. Whoa! Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Big time boring action. Yeah, down you, from it, and again, you start going through previous lows, like yeah. maybe there. That's still quite a ways away, but I'm telling well, you. This one was at the low was, uh, on this day, with the low was 57.60. And the low on this day was... 59.61. That's not too far apart. So what are you saying? If it breaches that's former I, low, it, it runs breaches a that one. But let's put up a, that's a one month. Let's put up a three month. Let's see where the real low is here in the last three months. Oh, way down here. Yeah. Tuesday, okay, so August 14th. That. Isn't that interesting? The day before they announced the Constellation deal. Yeah. So this is the thing. Okay. So this day, the low was 32.01. On the Constellation News, this stock has doubled. So do you not think that all this volume of buying down here, cut it in half because obviously there's a buyer on one side and a seller on the other. Does it, not, does it not make sense to you that at 71, in the absence of future value catalysts, that the short-term traders would now be exiting, thinking that the trade is exhausted? I mean, the only reason to hang on to it is if you're a believer like me and it's going to 100 bucks and you're just waiting for that moment before Christmas. Not that I think it's going there. Not that I'm holding the stock also. You don't have a money bet. You just have a pretend bet. Right? Well, I have a bet in my head. I, I mean, I, you, I was, you either bet two things in my uh, line of work, Ed. You either bet money you know, a or you bet, bet you know your reputation. Bet in their head? You know who has a bet in their your head? Your reputation. The uh, NHL commissioner, Gary Betton. You understand which is more valuable, Benton. though? You're betting the money or the reputation? The reputation. Oh, see? See? Now we can be friends. Because the money, you know, the money's going to come, the money's going to go. Your reputation is only here for you know, your 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 reputation is the only thing you can take from yourself. Well, no one else can take that from you. Only you can take that from yourself. 
Wow. Pearls of Wisdom. Pearls of Wisdom. From Ed Molesky. We got to make a song yeah, about yeah. you. Okay, so, so you, know, you know what? Look, through the band here, this, this, is, this is so, this is becoming more glaring now. We had the, that's the Tuesday, there's the Wednesday. Here we are. Well, that's having a, it's having a good time over there. Anyways, okay, like I said, we had, uh, we had a whole bunch of people through here today. We, about the MPX and Ianthus merger. Here's Hadley Ford has to say about that. Okay, this oh. letter live, my guest in this segment, returning for, I don't know, the 10th time, <laughs> is Hadley Ford, CEO of Ianthus Capital Holdings, trading on the CSE under the symbol IAN. Hadley, welcome back. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Hadley, big news. You're a consolidator in the space now, having just completed or announced a transformational combination mm -hmm. with MPX. Yes. And so tell me what, how that all came about and what is the upside for Ianthus and MPX shareholders? Absolutely. In the U.S. cannabis market, there's three factors that are important for success. One is footprint. National scale is incredibly important. There's probably going to be a trillion dollars of market cap 10 years from now at the cash register in the United States. There's a $50 billion market today. That's penetration of 11%. Whoa, did yes. you just say a trillion, a trillion dollars in market cap? With a T. <laughs> One trillion. <laughs> One trillion dollars. <laughs> Whoa, now yeah. that's, uh, that's yeah. I call that a bullish outlook. That's what? a bullish outlook. So here's how you get there. Okay. Today there's about 50 to 60 billion of sales in the United States. That's black market and white market. The, uh, kind of 90% of that is black market. That represents an 11% penetration uh, of regular way users of cannabis. That's defined as twice a month. Obviously, most of those people are calling their dealer, meeting someone in a back alley, picking something about a club. The, you know, this sort of middle of the bell curve, the soccer mom, isn't partaking in cannabis because that's not a channel she is going to be familiar with. Over the next 10 years, our supposition is that cannabis will look a lot more like alcohol. Mm. And you see that penetration rate go from 11% upwards to where alcohol is today defined as regular use, which is 55%. Oh, I that's thought it was 100. Yeah, <laughs> that's just you and me. Yeah, okay. So that's, uh, you have a, a 4 or 5x growth in the market. So that could get you to, from 50 billion to 200 billion. Mm -hmm. Now, cannabis operators own not just the cash register, but also the brand. Hmm. So you've got much better vertical margins. Branded purveyors of alcohol trade at five to six times revenue. Right. That's a trillion dollars of market cap. Now, if cannabis is like a regular way industry, 80-20 rule, the top guys are gonna have 80%, everyone else is gonna split up 20. Because of the restricted license nature of the cannabis market in the United States, you're not gonna have many more than you know, nine or 10 national players, just the way it's gonna be. So nine or 10 national players are gonna be jockeying to divide up eight hundred billion dollars of market cap. Hmm. Scale matters, it matters today, it's a land grab, you need to be really good at M&A. Remember, we've grown that way. We've done, uh, we acquired uh, New York, we acquired Florida, we bought out a minority partner in Mass, we acquired Vermont, we acquired Colorado. This is just another acquisition, I should say another, it's our best and biggest <laughs> acquisition. Um, but that's, that's what our heritage is. And, and interestingly, the MPX team is the same way. I think they've done six or seven acquisitions over the last 24 months as well. So now you've combined an M&A deal machine and we will be a national player. We have two super regional footprints right now on the East Coast and West Coast. We will be in every state that sells cannabis. And uh, we think that's, that's where you have to be if you want to be part of that 80% uh, $800 billion opportunity. Hmm. Fascinating. Okay, so what does MPX have that you wanted? Um, well, there's a couple of things. There's a strategic piece, which are obviously the states that they're in, Arizona, Nevada. Uh, Maryland, they're in Massachusetts as well as, as we are, and uh, California. So we've got the geographical footprint, but they also have pioneered the concept of you know, this, this retail concept of a very inviting and open store, sort of middle of the bell curve, a place where your mom, my mom might go uh, mm. to buy cannabis. And then also pioneered the concept of a brand that's different than the store name, right? So they've got the um, MPX brand, and they sell that in their own stores, and they also carry other brands in their store, and then they sell MPX in another 40 or 50 stores in Arizona. So Beth Stavola, who you know, created this whole concept uh, in Arizona you know, four or five years ago, 
is a key piece of the deal for us. We think that you know, part of our senior leadership team in helping us define that one store name, that one brand name, driving that forward is going to be very key. I think um, there's another uh, piece which is a little bit strange because um, it doesn't really get talked about that much, but in cannabis, growers and uh, extractors and product formulation experts, you know, prior to it being legal, they didn't talk because if you talked, you went to jail. So, you know, every state that we're in, we've got sort of different growers and processes. You know, the opportunity to take best practices, standardize that, and take operational excellence across our entire uh, network of uh, operations is it's really unprecedented. And the t senior team that we have has a lot of experience in doing that. So that's, that's another advantage to it. And then the last piece, it's a little more esoteric, but I think it was a big driver to it, is the capital markets component of it. Both of our stocks were structured to be public companies. There's not very much overhang. There's a lot of public float. We actually trade individually you know, quite, uh, quite well. Uh, together, we should be one of the uh, most liquid stocks uh, in the US as a percentage of our combined market cap, probably be the leader. Um, that, that means that when institutional investors decide, how do I want to play the US market? They're going to look for uh, a stock that uh, is very liquid, they can get in and out of, they can build a position on the number of days trading that exist. That's going to be Ianthus. That will have a lot of benefits for us. Uh, as more people invest, you get more uh, liquidity, get lower volatility, which is a lower cost of capital. You have a tighter bid ask. And then potential partners will look and say, wow, I'm happy to take your stock because I can get in and out of it. I need to you know, thank you for all this stock for my operations. I'd like to buy a house, pay for my kids' education. I know I can sell. So there's a lot of opportunities, lower cost of capital, better liquidity. That piece gets driven. We saw this happen in Canada. Mm -hmm. now, I'm a reformed banker. I don't invent stuff. I just steal stuff. Right. <laughs> Canopy, Canopy had this same strategy. Right. Tweed was an $80 million company. Bedrocan was $40 million. Tweed bought Bedrocan. It traded up to $200 in a $2.10 stock price. We know where it is today. North of $30 billion in market cap and a stock north of 60 the leadership they had in the capital markets is what helped drive that. They became the most liquid company when investors said, oh, I want to play in this Canadian market. They bought Canopy as the proxy for the market because it was easy to get in and out of it and it was liquid. Mm -hmm. And that drove them to great heights. They could use their stock as a capital weapon, as an acquisition weapon. Iantis is going to do the exact same thing. Interesting. Um, touching on Canopy, they announced an acquisition in Colorado of Ebu, which mm -hmm. is hemp and THC, mm -hmm. essentially negating Bruce Linton's representations over time that they would only go into jurisdictions that were federally legal. Oh, he's going to be in the U.S. <laughs> I mean, well, he is now. Who's, 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 who's he kidding? I mean, but, the guy has technology, he's got capital. Yeah. He's got beverage companies. The U.S. is the largest market for cannabis, the largest market uh, for alcohol. Uh, he's going to be there. You know, right. His new partners in Constellation want to be there. He wants to be there. He's just got to work through the technical stuff. So you know, he's playing the politics. I'll, I'm against the U.S. I right. won't do anything, but he's going to be there. He's, you know, at the end of the day, he's a business So man. does the fact that uh, Canopy's in the U.S. Bring him on. All? Bring, Bring him on. on. I know it's no Bring threat on. there. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so now what does the combined uh, sort of footprint look like now for yeah, the combined? Ten, yeah, 10 states. I mean, mm -hmm. East Coast, let me see if I can remember them all now. So we got Vermont, Massachusetts, uh, New York, Maryland, Florida. Uh, we've got uh, now through MPX applications pending in New Jersey. Uh, on the West Coast, we've got, um, or the, the kind of Southwest and the West Coast, we've got New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, Nevada, California. So two super regional footprints. We can build from that. In any state you see where you've got legal cannabis, you know, you can assume that we've got a piece of paper with, uh, with their name on it. Wow. So I get the sense that you're sort of planning to head towards unicorn billion dollar plus market cap status. Yeah, the pro forma now is a billion seven Canadian. Oh, wow. Really? Uh, yeah. Okay. So it was like two horns. Right. Two like we're, horns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you're going to grow a third one next. <laughs> <laughs> Damn straight. Damn straight. Fantastic. The, uh, so if I was to be a uh, betting man, which I just which you, be, are. Yes, which you are, I would say that it really doesn't matter whether the U.S. ever goes federally deprohibited cannabis yeah. because the states are going to get there of their own accord. Absolutely. Regardless. And yep. it's just a matter of time till the inherent contradiction in the government trying to enforce a law that denies the medical virtues of its yep. own DE or FDA yep. approval of drugs like epileptrol or 
apple. How do you Easy say? for you to say. Yeah, right. Don't even, you don't, know what I'm don't, talking don't about. Even, don't even get me going. I've only had one <laughs> cup, of, cup of coffee. <laughs> anyway, so it doesn't. It, I get the sense increasingly it really doesn't matter. But yeah. nonetheless, there was a full page ad in the Wall Street Journal the day before yesterday. Oh yeah, from Derek. Yeah. So yeah, you, yeah, know, yeah, you know, you so know Derek. Yes, right? I we're, do, we're hoping yeah. to have him on for a chat about oh, he's that. He's always fun. <laughs> but is that like so? It seems to some people it still really matters. And what's how is it that you're not really fussed about it, but he's pulling, putting full page ads in the Wall Street Journal? Well, you have to ask him when he comes on. I, I don't, doesn't really concern me too much. You know, I don't think it's on the, uh, the federal radar screen to uh, you know, roll, roll this back. The United States has a long, proud history of states' rights. Um, and I think uh, you know, it's going to keep rolling forward that way. And you know, I was uh, joking the other day, the medical program start and everyone, you know, like Jeff Sessions will say, marijuana is a gateway drug. I'll tell you what it's a gateway for. The states get a little taste of that tax dollar from the medical side and bang, then they want full rec. That's what's happened in New York. They're saying <laughs> that full rec stuff that we're never going to talk about, uh, right. it's a foregone conclusion now. Right. Well, certainly I know of lots of uh, legislators who could benefit from the consumption of cannabis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's great, Hadley. We're going to leave it there for now. We'll come All back right. to you in due course when you've Fantastic. grown your third horn and we'll <laughs> keep on talking. Thanks for joining me All, today. Always a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Not Hadley, he's always been quite the dude, quite the man about town, quite the, quite the entrepreneur, good talker, probably an excellent... All, all the young dudes. Uh, all the young dudes carry you know, the You have news. a great voice, I have a great sort of style. I don't think I have a great voice. Yeah, you do. So I you do the singing and I'll lip sync and it'll be you. <laughs> no, that would be funny. That would be funny. <laughs> Um, you know, we have And look who just walked in. Who, it's Mr. Anthony Mr. Dirk 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 wow. Holy smokes. You know what we're, we're going to do is uh, we're going to cut to a quick take we did with our friend from Newfoundland. I don't see his name on the list, but our friend Thomas H. Thomas H. Okay, Christ. we don't get to talk to him. Tell you what, why don't we throw up now. So we heard from Hadley on the NPX this transaction. Now let's hear from ha uh, from Todd. What's Todd's last name? Harrison. Harrison. Sorry, I've only got Todd comma here. Todd Harrison, CIO of CB1 Capital, was is a hedge fund manager who owns both Ianthus and MPX. And here's what he had to say. Welcome back. Welcome back. My guest in this segment is Todd Harrison. He's the chief investment officer of CB1 Capital. Todd, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, James. Uh, Todd, give us an overview. What does CB1 Capital do? Uh, we're a hedge fund that invests in cannabinoid wellness strategies. So really uh, looking at cannabis through the lens of wellness, uh, pretty wide berth in terms of wellness, but in particular efficacy driven solutions. We think that this is going to uh, be a bit of disruption for Western healthcare. Wow. No kidding. Yeah, you're, you're preaching to the converted here. Um, so when you say hedge fund, is it, are, you in, uh, are your investors mostly the, the general public or other institutional? What, what sort of investor matrix are we talking here? Uh, typically high net worth investors, family offices, some institutions. Uh, you know, this is a, a space that is widely misunderstood, as you know. And as we uh, have our conversations with folks across the investment landscape, uh, you know, you really find all kinds here. And, and most people, even those who believe they get it, still think this is about growing uh, cannabis and smoking cannabis and we try to explain to them uh, that this is just an ingredient cannabis and hemp are ingredients and it's pretty ubiquitous in terms of the output so uh, we're real we're real excited about a secular bull market and even more excited when people don't seem to get it right and it i get the sense looking at your sort of your name and everything that you're focused on the cbd side of things not so much on the thc implying more medicinal than recreational or is that just no. a misconception on my part? Yeah, no, the CB1 receptor is, is a receptor in the human body and in anything with the vertebrae. So the science is very much focused on, uh, on reaching the CB1 and the CB2 receptors, uh, which is different than CBD. CBD is one cannabinoid, seems to be all the rage these days, but it's one of many. Uh, THC, of course, is sort of the, uh, as Ethan Russo likes to say it, the good cannabinoid, bad cannabinoid, but certainly very therapeutic in its applications. Uh, but there's a whole host of the minor cannabinoids which is where we get really excited in, in terms of uh, CBN for sleep and just a number of other different applications that we think this gets into in terms of wellness. 
Well, Todd, I can see that you know way more about the endocannabinoid <laughs> system than I do, and that's annoying as hell. However, I, I, I will put aside my momentary childlike frustration and try to learn something here. Um, what oh level of knowledge can we have about these minor cannabinoids at this time since it's been such a long, dark history of suppression of research? Yep. Yep, and that's and I see what you did there, James. Uh, but I'll go along with it. You know, certainly there are no experts in the cannabinoid space. We believe there are uh, so, there are explorers, there are pioneers. Uh, but even those who are furthest along the pathway will tell you that we don't know a lot more than we do know about this. But that's sort of the exciting part, right? Uh, we do know that it's efficacious in certain uh, certain arenas. Obviously, Epidiolex with GW proved that. Uh, the Class 5 uh, from the DEA on the U.S. side demonstrates that. That's one of our favorite positions, of course. But uh, certainly, we think there's a lot to learn and a lot more that's going to go through the clinical process because Western medicine, as you know, uh, you know, it's the not invented here process. So if they don't don't know it then it can't be true so this has to go through the uh, proper processes uh, as we say okay let's talk a bit about what uh, how do you how do you allocate capital where are your areas of focus where are the areas that you stay away from yeah no great question so we look at the capital chain sort of uh, with the Canadian majors listed on the US as being obviously the most well known the most uh, you know, I guess uh, endeared in the in the in the perception of the public. But as you look at the uh, the Canadian majors that are listed in Canada, uh, then we find I, I think a lot of relative value there. And as you go down that food chain or downstream, as we say, uh, the less liquidity there is, the less institutional presence there is, uh, the more of a relative edge we find, the more uh, price mis mismatching we find down the stream. Uh, so it goes through the U.S. and so we'll see more migrate to the U.S. Obviously, we're seeing that now. Uh, but ultimately, we look at Canada, we look at the biotech side, which is where we have about a third of our capital right now. Uh, we think biotech's about to take the baton uh, in terms of the efficacy driven solutions, right? So we see uh, the beverages, the nutraceuticals, the consumer packaged goods on one side, and certainly very exciting on the other side. Uh, we see efficacy driven solutions. So uh, we look at that as, a, as an exciting space in Australia, we think is, is coming up on, on the tail end in terms of uh, future markets. Mm -hmm. So it sounds to me like you think that the bigger future is on the medical side more so than the recreational side. Well, we think the future is on the wellness side, and we think wellness has a pretty wide berth. Uh, and we don't really differentiate between the buckets in terms of opportunities because we believe that a fair amount of self-medication has been going on through the years. This has been a very misunderstood, a very demonized drug. Uh, there's been a fair amount of misinformation and propaganda that's been put out into the marketplace. And I think as people understand that this is actually good for you, this is efficacious, uh, that this is therapeutic, uh, that it's going to open up all sorts of new markets. And that's what we're focused on. Yeah, that's incredible. Uh, you and I are on the same page in so many ways. Do you uh, consume CBDs as a matter of personal wellness? I do. Um, you know, I've made no bones about it. I actually got away from a lot of the prescription poison uh, with my uh, medical card uh, in New York State, and certainly a uh, big proponent of this as an alternative therapy. The side effect profile is de minimis relative to what sort of we grew up on in terms of medication. So I think this is going to really help and save a lot of a lot of lives going forward. We look at things like Florida. Uh, with the elderly population being really ground zero for cannabinoid wellness, uh, three and a half times the national prescription average. I mean, this is going to really ripple through society in ways that I don't think people are prepared for. Yeah, no, I couldn't. I could not agree more. I, uh, I tell people that just imagine a world where every single living man, woman, child and pet has CBDs in their medicine cabinet. Yeah. And that is nothing, nothing less than the full potential of this market, just as you say, on a wellness side. So that's, that's great. I'm so glad we're meeting. It's been, it's been too long. <laughs> We've got to get together. Yes. So, what's, uh, so what's the, what are the big sort of opportunities that really excite you that might be under the radar of the average investor and that we probably haven't even talked about too much on our show? Yeah, no, I think that, you know, two things. One, from a top-down macro standpoint, the idea that, you know, there's probably, if you roll in all of the IPOs that are coming to market, and there's a lot of IPOs that are coming to market in the next six weeks, but if you roll all of those into the public market cap space, as we've been saying, it's about $100 billion of global equity market cap. 
Uh, you know, you look at cannabis right now as a $300 billion cash crop. So if you contemplate the optionality of the end products and the use cases, you know, we don't see any reason this can't be a two to, tr- two to $3 trillion market in 10 years. So by orders of magnitude, we think the stock market is off sides here. But uh, in terms from bottoms up, we do think, as I alluded to before, we think biotech is going to be the next sort of leader uh, in phase two of the secular bull market. Uh, we have holdings like GW Pharmaceuticals. Corbis is another one, even though it's down today. Uh, we own these positions. We think they're going to take the mantle in terms of, or the baton rather, in terms of uh, this next leg of the race. Wow. That's awesome. How do you feel about the biosynthetic generators like uh, Ginkgo that's owned by Kronos and uh, yep. Hyacinth that's partly owned by uh, Organogram? Do you think those, th- yep. Yep. those companies have a huge future? Yes, absolutely we do. We actually like Kronos because of this deal, and and certainly Organogram is one of our core core holdings in Canada. Village Farms is another one. CanTrust is another one. Uh, We think those are sort of the chosen three that is going to get the love as more people do the work. Uh, but we think biosynthetics are, are sort of the future for things like cosmetics and vanity more so than maybe, uh, you know, the edibles or uh, or the beverages. But certainly they'll have their applications. It's going to save money. It's going to save time. Uh, and we have some of those names in our in our portfolio as sort of the next uh, as sort of the biotech side of the equation that we think is going to take the next leg for higher. So biosynthetics biosynth- certainly have a role in, in the forward future of cannabis, in our opinion. Sure. Do you think that there's uh, much risk in the U.S. marketplace in terms of oversupply of cannabis causing uh, price compression that will ultimately have a uh, calming effect on the number of companies uh, able to stay above water as a result of that? Well, certainly on the supply side, and and we've kind of made no bones about our point of view that uh, this isn't about farming as much as it is about uh, the major LPs are really biotechs and drag and their and their nutraceutical companies and beverage companies and and they have sort of the optionality of their revenue streams in front of them, which is very exciting. Uh, we try to steer clear from the front end of that because we do believe that cannabis, if not a commodity like hemp, is certainly uh, commoditized to a degree. Uh, but we differ from the conventional wisdom that this is a negative for the space. We actually think uh, it's one of the more bullish elements going forward. Is that the uh, API the the the, the input costs are going to go down as the price of cannabis goes down, which is going to be very helpful on the back end for margins for companies that focus on things like that. The counter royalties of the world, which we own, uh, and a number of other companies that are focusing on the back end. One of the reasons we like the MPX Ianthus marriage so much is, is MPX, uh, uh, their extraction routes and, and sort of what they're doing there on, on the product side. So uh, we're very excited about that. I know you didn't ask me about it, but certainly uh, there were two 5% positions of ours that got, got married or are planning to get married married uh, and we couldn't be happier about the deal we're big uh, fans of both Hadley and Beth yeah okay actually I was going to ask you about that because we had Hadley here just to, just before you and we're having Scott Boyce here just after you so tell me about the features of that deal that from an uh, investor's point of view are net positive uh, sure so uh, the, the number one uh, you know focus of ours is really the limited overlap on the footprint right I think it's just Massachusetts uh, that they overlap there. So they're really expanding their reach. They're really uh, looking at a bird's eye view of, of sort of their strategy. So that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, we look at the extraction side of, of MPX is really that's where the margins are. Uh, and that's a really smart strategy to be going forward. And the brand side of the equation uh, certainly is where we want to be investing in on a forward basis. And then finally, you know, by our pen, MPX will do 100 million next year, maybe 300 million in 2020. Uh, this is accretive. And, and if you're going to make a case for the equity prices of a lot of these companies, you have to sort of buy into the idea that they're going to uh, buy their way, uh, merge their way into better multiples through accretive deals. And this certainly probably checks that box on, uh, you know, on a few levels. So uh, we haven't sold any. We have both uh, Ianthus and MPX, and we're holding on to both for now. Uh, we think both stocks or the stock uh, uh, comes out of this moves higher. Wow. That's, uh, that's interesting. You, all the names that you're in, I'm in. It's like, it's just amazing. Are there any, uh, are there any companies or situations out there that you think are worthy of warning to investors that you'd feel comfortable talking about? Or is that something you'd rather stay away from? Yeah, no, it's not so much, you know, we don't, we don't hedge. We have non-correlated hedges in the S&P and the NASDAQ against, our, against a lot of cannabinoid wellness holdings in our portfolio. Uh, we think it's a little early on the curve for, uh, to be short these names. I mean, we've dabbled on the short side. Uh, there are some valuation discrepancies, but having traded, you know, I've been trading 30 years. 
Uh, I've seen a fair amount of, of bubbles and busts in that time, and it's not a valuation story right now as much as a footprint story uh, and as much as really uh, uh, um, trying to meet that chasm between perception and reality. We think there's certainly a lot of uh, a lot of noise out there still, a lot of images of Cheech and Chong when you think about cannabis. And, you know, until we see sort of the awareness that this is actually something that's very good for society, it's very good for jobs, it's very good for tax revenue, it's very good for the patients, and it's certainly going to be very good for investors. So uh, we think we're in the early innings still. Uh, if there's any concerns, possibly you might, you know, throw out there that there's a lot of companies coming public uh, on the U.S. side. Or we like to call it the fangification of U.S. cannabis is in the process of occurring. So uh, wow. there's a lot of paper coming uh, in the next six weeks. So there might be a short term saturation. But again, we think we're early in the story. Huh. Todd, you have uh, been a very enlightening guest and I've really enjoyed this conversation. I would like to come back to you regularly and uh, I would like to come down to New York and meet you and take you out for a beer or lunch or dinner or something. Um, but we're going to leave it there for now. I'm definitely going to be coming back to you regularly. Thank you so much for your participation today. Hey, so there you have it. Once so again. who have we got here right uh, now? So what did you think of uh, what did you think of uh, Todd? Did you? I I, th I thought a lot of Todd. <laughs> you you know what? That I, I'm giving I'm giving the nod to Todd. The nod to Todd. Todd's going to be a regular on our show. You're going to give that. him. The, I'm giving him the nod. Yeah. No, he sees eye to eye with me. In fact, when he was on, his eyes were like right here with me, sort of like yours, right? So here. you know, when when uh, waterfowl mate, they uh, waterfowl. Yeah, they well, they, they, yourself, they bob buddy. <laughs> keep your dirty jokes to yourself. Anyways, I don't know if you might have noticed, but we have rather a stellar man about town here. Anthony Durkach is a director of FSD Pharma, one of our favorite companies on the CSE, trading under the symbol HUGE, HUGE, H-U-G-E. And he's got another company coming soon where the symbol is going to be PUMP, PUMP. So master of the understated symbol. Anthony Durkatch. How are you, Anthony? All right. A fellow Pole. A fellow Pole. I am. Polish Fel last name. You're right. So you yeah. guys are Polacks here. Yeah. Polski. Polski Ogorki. Polski Ogorki's times two. Whoa. <laughs> this is a special day. Anyways, anyway. Anthony, I want to ask you before we get any further down that before path. Before I say anything. <laughs> can we ask you, how did you come up with the idea of launching a company yep. with such a huge freaking capitalist structure for a startup that was like the whole thing sounded crazy and it just got crazier and crazier and then boom, suddenly it was just like, it just made so much sense that everybody who was bad mouthing it is suddenly pretending to be your friend again. <laughs> uh, yeah. <coughs> yeah, so so I think, um, you know, sort of being around the penny stock world for a few years and, you know, I was trying to sort of create value in, in the world of penny stocks, which is sure. sometimes a hard thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the cannabis industry and sector, you know, created something in Canada I don't think that anyone had seen before. I mean, far bigger than your best junior mining booms or oil and gas booms or banking booms. And so, you know, I think uh, it, it was probably the right time. And I think the idea was, you know, is there sort of a, a stock that could have been created that, you know, that would have a falling that no one had ever seen before. And, and so, you know, I studied some of the Australian deals and, and mining deals and how they had these, you know, very large floats. And so when we were beginning construction of the financing of HUGE, you know, that was sort of came to mind. It's like, why, if they can do it in Australia, can we not do it in Canada? Hmm. Yeah, because they have companies with monster uh, shares. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, interesting. And, and so it was like, well, so why does it work in, in Australia and why hadn't sure. it worked in Canada? I think in Canada, I was told by different brokers that there were three companies before Huge that came out with over 1 billion shares in the float. And unfortunately, all three were related to mining or oil. And uh, they all went to, uh, you know, half cent bids or, or no zero bid. bids. Yeah, yeah offered. And, 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 and that was, uh, uh, even uh, the CSC Exchange had asked us and sort of reiterated that when we tried to take huge public. Right. You know, whoa, you know, whoa, shouldn't you do a rollback? And, and, and the answer was no. Mm. But, but there were other reasons. I mean, we had 4,700 shareholders on day one of trading right. with huge. And, yeah. and, you know, First Republic had to deny I don't know, almost yeah. a thousand people that weren't accredited to do the financing. So I think that built up sure. a, a So demand. how many different uh, participants did you have in that, 
in that. Uh, it, was 4, it was just over 4,700 shareholders on day one. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's like that's wow. like incredible. Yeah. And and uh, uh, I had a good question, but <laughs> there it goes. The question just disappeared <laughs> into the so abyss. The uh, this was like traded more shares on most days than any other stock has ever traded on the CSE. Uh, not only the CSE, also the TSXV. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so like this is, people are looking at this and going, where, where is the demand coming from? Who's buying this stuff? Well, and <clears throat> I think even when you look at volume, see, there's, there's also other stories to the sure. whole game of volume. So you have, you know, you either have your CSE or TSXV or TSX proper, right. and then you have a number of different other exchanges that also trade the stock, right? So outside of whatever, Alpha, Neo, Chi-X, Yeah, there's, Chi there's all kinds there. There's a there. number yeah. of different... Six <coughs> so or eight, probably. More, yeah. Is there more? Yeah, okay. there's more than eight. So, you know, the true volume numbers are never seen when you look at your TSXV or CSE top trading stock. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's I have, I have that, uh, that feature on my, my stock watch, so I, I do look so at... So stock watch catches every other exchange except for this exchange called Matchmaker. Okay. And that's what we learned through HUGE. So. The one uh, website that actually will let you know the total traded shares in the day, but it's it's delayed uh, until 4:20, is uh, the TMXMoney.com site. If you go to huge dot or colon CC, that actually gives you the total traded, and that total traded will be different than what you see on Stockwatch. Hmm. It'll be higher every single time, every single day. Not right, eh? Yeah. So now tell me, what is the what is the long term sort of business? model for huge huge so so it, it, we will be focused in pharma in medical and and <clears throat> the reason being is because i think number one thomas who was the original founder uh, of of huge he uh you know he 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 used marijuana for the first time you know to cure his foot pain because of type 2 diabetes mm -hmm. and, and and then he saw the light after you know being offered a cookie and finally trying it after you know, 60 plus years. Um, <clears throat> and for him, that was sort of the vision. For us, it's the vision not only because it's the right thing to do, I think, from a human perspective, but also uh, it's the, uh, it, it's where the margins are gonna be. And, and I think going forward, a lot of people will say, well, is the market overvalued? Are we in a bubble? You know, those types of natural questions that sure. everyone should be asking in this market. And the mm -hmm. answer is yes, we are in a bubble. You know, does anyone ever know when the bubble's going to burst? The answer is no. I'm on record with CNBC saying that, you know, I thought the bubble was going to burst in the internet in 1998. And guess what? If you were investing in those March other three years, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. you know, they, they actually, and more money was made in that oh, I know. end the, of the, the bubble. So it's crazy, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so and no, none of us can predict what happens. I think, though, what's really important, what we want to drive in, in our company is, you know, Canada it is a very small country, and it's 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 just financially it's very small. You know, where is the growth going to happen in the cannabis uh, industry going forward? Is going to be international, and more so in the investment community, it's also going to be international. So, if you're going into the U.S., onto Nasdaq, onto the NYSE, if you're going into London, if you're going into Hong Kong, those are going to open bigger doors. However, with everything still being federally illegal in every other country outside of Uruguay and Canada. Uh, the challenge, or, or well, the opportunity, I think actually I should restate mm -hmm. that. The opportunity is gonna be in accessing some of that capital. And personally, I think in America, they will legalize medicinal use and it will happen during the Trump era. And for one reason, votes. Right. Yeah. Do you think, how long do you think the Trump era is gonna last though? So we'll see in the midterm elections how Probably things go. Probably another six years. Yeah, <laughs> no, who knows? It could another be, yeah. six years, great. No, There's something just, to celebrate. Well, you know what? Oh, Jesus There's Christ. a lot of people that like them. Really? There, there, well, and, and there are, and, and, and you know, as much as everyone says, and you know, it's, I don't want to get into politics, but you know, Trump's uh, been a very astute businessman and, and it's going to carry into politics. And so, he, you know, he's going to go where his votes are going to go. And so it depends on how these, if these midterm elections end up being very negative uh, for the Republican Party, you know, for his bid to become president again in the federal elections, he's going to have to go after some new bases. You know, the cannabis base is pretty big, considering that 31 states 
have already legalized medicinally. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, why federally, if you make that change, is that really going to upset your base? I mean, it might upset some like you know fundamentalist groups, but are those fundamentalist groups bigger than the cannabis using and then cannabis medicinal using groups? And the answer probably today is no, by virtue of their own democracy. Yeah, somebody sent me something the other day saying that he's likely to uh, endorse federal all right, enough about Trump, though. Tell okay. me about Pump, your Medical. next deal. <laughs> so, 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 this is getting way too mugged, fired down. And <laughs> sorry, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just saying. Like, say, if they, and you're right. it and for, in fact, I don't like to talk about that. I was that. too it's busy buying huge on the spot. So. It's, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of interesting that we, you know, we, we don't want to, uh, it, it's not political, but I think, uh, you know, if they legalize it federally, medicinally in, in America, if you're positioned properly on the NASDAQ or the NYSE, you will can, can get bigger bumps than we would ever see in Canada, right? Yeah. So, I, and, and we'll have access to a lot more money, and I think what it will stimulate probably is a marijuana biotech rush, you know, that we have maybe never seen before, or could be bigger than the internet was in the late 90s, and, and so that's, I think, where we want to pivot huge. Sure, yeah. so huge by the looks of it. I've noticed the way that you've been doing these transactions, and so you've got uh, th this deal coming with international, can we talk about the international? World class extractions. World class yeah. extractions, rather. You've got uh, CanTab, who are now occupying different sides of what looks like a cannabis development campus. It's like cannabis wonderland. Well, cannabis <laughs> wonderland, where we're going to love to go and play. <laughs> Go on the bit. rides. Yeah, we got. Is there a one pass, one pass for one price? You get everything, kind of thing. Good question. I haven't yeah. thought that far ahead. So tell me, what's the uh, what's the plan for uh, for international extracts? World class extracts. World class extracts. Yeah. So so, um, so the way that world class was formed uh, was a strange story. Okay. Uh, I had, I, I at that point actually I was still selling our very first public round of huge and. We had about 40 people come on site to give a tour, potential investors, and uh, a few of them brought edibles that they had either made or they knew people that had made them. And so, you know, you're looking at these things, you're looking at these, you know, really nicely packaged brownies and cookies and different types of edibles, and, and really it dawned on, on, on me, you know, hey, we are the former craft plant. This was a place where they made large-scale edibles, so it's probably the right fit. However, to make these edibles, you have to use extraction of some form, whether you're going to produce it into a powder, a pulp, an oil, etc. So on the way back, uh, on the drive back to Toronto from the craft plant, on my mind I was thinking, you know, extractions, but where are we going to extract from? And uh, Right at that moment in time, I got a, uh, a text that was not meant for me. Mm -hmm. It was meant for someone's girlfriend who okay. I had not spoken to in a the week. guy I hadn't spoken to in three years. Uh, but you know, he was sending a message to his girlfriend, not to me, a text. And uh, so I, f I kind of found it amusing and thought, wow, you know, how's it going? I hadn't talked to him in three years. <coughs> I had invested in him about six years ago in three different stages. Uh, and he was uh, working on extraction uh, technology in the petroleum industry. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he picks up the phone because I said this, you know, your text, I, th I don't think it was meant for me. Maybe it was, but if it was, <laughs> you know, how's it going? Uh, calls me up. He said, you know, I'm still working hard for your money. And he said, I want to thank you because you're the only investor that I have that has never bothered me. He's like, you haven't called me in three years. And so I said, hey, you know, I, I knew what I was getting involved in from an investment perspective. These are high risk deals. And so like, what, like why am I gonna waste anyone's energy, you know, trying to, to bother you as a shareholder? Right. And so you know, I wanna thank you. And then it dawned on me that I was thinking about extraction and this is an extraction play. And just for whatever reason, it happened right at that moment in time. And I said, you know what? You know, I'm You're just a leaving. Eureka moment, a I'm eureka moment. Exactly, I was leaving the crap land and I'm like, hold on. You know what, this extraction technology that you've been trying to infiltrate, you know, the petroleum industry with, you know, can we use it uh, for cannabis? And his answer was, you can use it for any organic material. However, I don't know how well it will perform, and I've never used or worked with cannabis ever in the past, so I don't know. He was like, but because you're such a nice shareholder and you never, you know, busted my balls, was his quote. Um, he's like, 
I'd be happy to, to test it for you at cost. We'll set up a makeshift lab, do some beakers. Did in California on January 2nd, and that's how World Class Extractions was formed. Huh, so the, <laughs> that's great. All right, well, that's awesome, Anthony. Let's uh, leave it there for now. We'll come back to you in due course, probably with the launch of Pump, of which I'm going to be a shareholder. Full disclosure, I'm a shareholder in Huge. And uh, thanks for joining us hey. today. Hey, thank you guys for the opportunity. Great, great, Anthony. Now we're going to swap on over to uh, Scott Boys, who is the CEO of MPX, to hear his take on how that Ianthus MPX merger is going to work for him. Welcome back. My guest in this segment is Scott Boys. He's the CEO of MPX Bioceutical Corporation, trading on that, or should I say, traded, once traded on the CSE under the MPX. Now, this merger that we were talking about, Scott, with, uh, with Hadley and mm -hmm. Ianthus, um, does this mean there's going to be two separate companies? Uh, yeah, we're, split, we're spinning off the Canadian asset. So right. we have a, a Canadian license here. We're working on another facility up in Owen Sound. Um, so Hadley and the group will focus totally on the United States. Mm -hmm. They're US-centric, and that's where they want to focus. So we'll, we're going to concentrate on some products in the Canadian market, although we still we don't intend to compete with Canopy and Aurora and some of the big boys. So okay. A couple of niche markets. And then uh, I've spent a lot of time in Europe the last two or three months. As you know, we raised a significant amount of capital there. Yeah. And there, the European market is kind of where the U.S. market was from a capital markets perspective and even from a, a consumer acceptance accept level where the U.S. was three or four years ago. Hmm. So there, there's 600 million people that are just coming onto the cannabis scene. Right. We think that represents a huge opportunity. Without buffoons at the top to derail any logic as far as getting it deprohibited. Well, federally. they have some of those over there too. So. <laughs> they, okay, well that's good. It wouldn't, <laughs> it wouldn't be fair if they didn't. Um, <clears throat> so then you're, so Ianthus is buying all the shares of MPX Bioceutical. Correct. And then as part of that transaction, they're spinning out the Canadian assets and the European assets to a new entity, mm -hmm. well, which will be private initially? Uh, we'll take it public quickly. You will take it public. We ah, take okay. It public. So that's great. This In fact, we intend to have it public by the time we close the, uh, the Ianthus transaction. Really? Well, I was going to say, this is, new, this is great news because finally I get to participate in your country, company at the entry level and now you're telling me that and, I'm already and late. And so will all the existing MPX investors because right? they get shares in Ianthus as part of the transaction and they also get a share in the new entity as well. Yeah, so that's quite a lift for, uh, from where you were. I mean, it's, I obviously thought that MPX would one day grow to be a much bigger company. You've sort of been taken out of that mix, but now you've got a chance to sort of refocus the portfolio and exactly. develop it with some more specific... You know, we were kind of in a rut, and, yeah. and the GTIs and the MedMen of the world had, have kind of emerged out of the U.S. landscape, and Iantis quite and MPX were both kind of being left behind. So in, in order to make create the greatest advantage for the shareholders of both companies, a merger of some sort just seemed to be the way to go, and it creates a company with a a 1.2, 1.3 billion dollar market cap and allows Hadley to go forward and raise capital from institutional investors and so forth. It was a good deal for shareholders on both sides. Right, so how many shares will MPX end up owning of Ianthus? Uh, so it's a ratio of 1.65 to the Ianthus share. Okay, so. okay, so that's, uh, yeah, that's too difficult math for me to do on the yeah. spot without a calculator. <laughs> well, the number of shares will depend too on the uh, on the share price of Ianthus at the time of close. Okay, so um, the European strategy then sounds like where the main focus is going to be with a bit of Canada involved. Well, Canada because we we have the Panexia relationship for Canada. Okay. So we will develop that here as well. We have the Silas the Salus Biopharma brand. We'll continue to, to create that. Some of the international play will be able to bring in some hemp oil and uh, for CBD products and cannabis oil bring it in from the third world. We're looking for some third world sources now. Further refine it here in Canada, distribute it to the U.S. market, or I'm sorry, to the Canadian market, and then distribute it internationally as well. Hmm. But we're also looking at some opportunities in the U.K. We've developed quite a, in the U.K. and in the E.U., we've developed a bit of a pipeline over the past couple months. Really? You sound pretty sort of excited. Well, about you know, that. I was over there three or four weeks ago, and who would ever have known that the Swiss market alone uh, uh, hemp pre-rolls with 1% THC contact is a billion dollar business in Switzerland. 
Mm. So if you take that and you advance, the, uh, look at the CBD market and the eventual the, ca- the full cannabis market over the whole continent and, and the, the UK, it's a massive market. It's going to be larger than the US and Canadian markets put together. Wow. And we also have a license application in Australia that's pretty well advanced mm-hmm. and they're looking to export to other countries as well. So. Well, fantastic. Okay, so then what are the big first, I mean, apart from concluding this transaction, what are the big next steps for this new entity that you're going to be heading up? Well, concluding the transaction is going to take a lot of work. It's <coughs> right. probably going to be January before we see it closed at the sure. earliest. Um, but we, we've already created the, the, we call it MPX International, MPXI. Right. Um, it's, it's been created. We're going to get some seed funding in, into it initially. Um, it starts out with four million US as a result of the transaction, but we'll go out and raise some capital, uh, get it listed probably on the CSE and be ready to move forward with a full business plan that we'll talk about a little bit later on. Right. Yeah. Is, uh, is it your opinion that the EU will go completely recreational and medical in due course? You know, it's, it, look what happened in Florida with CBD only and then it's, it's a little more medical, and then the medical opens up, and then eventually it'll go wreck. And I see the same kind of, of process happening in the European countries. Uh, but then again, I was in the UK in May. We hosted the uh, Cannabis Europa Conference. We were one of the sponsors. And uh, the panel there talked about it being going medical in the UK in two years. Mm-hmm. It's going medical November 1st. <coughs> right. So, yeah, under right. some limited scales, and it'll, it'll just advance. And I see the same process is happening there, but it's, it's key to get in and get an install base. To yeah, get a show me a before. British politician who runs on a pro cannabis anti Brexit camp platform, and I'll show you the next <laughs> Prime Minister of the UK. Um, <laughs> it's probably true. So, who do you think? So, in, you know, in the North American matrix, and actually globally, Canada is the leading sort of standards definer in the industry. Who would you say that is currently in Europe? Um, it's hard to say. Germany, of course, has got a program, but everybody's trying to run in there and fill it out. Um, Malta is emerging as a, a key producer. Uh, it's not easy to get a license there, but you can get a license and they're part of the EU, so that would allow them as a low-cost producer to move into the EU. You're seeing some of the Eastern European countries now are coming out with... We were actually interviewed by a group from Montenegro mm-hmm. that wanna de- want to develop facilities there. So anybody that's got EU access, you're going to have programs. Spain is already advanced. When we were at the Cannabis Europa conference in May, there was 30 countries attended that conference. So you can just see how quickly uh, the whole thing is emerging globally, not just yeah. in North America. <clears throat> and Canada well. set the pace, and it's probably accelerated the pace. Sure. So what's the total market size, uh, population-wise, of the area you're targeting there? It's about 600 million. 600 million. So in fact, when Americans say that America is the largest market, it's actually the European it's Union. Th- America is the largest quasi-legal market, right? but I'm sure the preponderance of cannabis in the UK and in EU is as large as it is in North America, maybe even larger in some cases. Sure, you bet. So um, should I buy MPX shares today or should I buy Ianthus shares today or should I buy both? Like how, as an investor, I'm hearing about this, I'm loving both companies, what should I do with my money? Well, I think you could buy either share, and you're gonna you're gonna be benef- you're gonna benefit from it because the companies are going to emerge together. Right. Um, it's it will be a combined entity. It'll move together. the in- The integration will be very quick. They've got their management teams. We had our management teams. They're East Coast focused. We were West Coast focused, although we were moving into the East Coast. They will really be a national company now. Mm-hmm. Um, so buy Ianta shares, buy MPX shares, you'll win on both sides. Yeah, right. Okay, that's great, Scott. We'll leave it there for now. Congratulations on the, on the combination, and we'll come back to you soon and hear more about this new entity. Thanks, James. Thank you. Great to see you again. I was just trying to buy huge stock, you know, just before the close. And you know what? The BMO will not let me buy stock close to the bell. I know, because they don't, they're thinking you're high. But I'm buying the offer. I'm not, I'm not buying, I'm not, you know, slamming through the offers and taking it higher. I know. I'm not upticking it. I just want to build a position before fucking Monday, BMO. Okay? Yeah. Just trying to build a position here. I mean, you know what? I'm switching. I'm done. I'm done with BMO. They keep doing that to me. They called me up the other day and they said, ah, never mind. We won't even talk about that. Anyways, so I got to say that I have been convinced and my mind has been changed by just what has happened with Huge. Like when we, I mean, really, when it started, guys were making jokes and laughing at it. 
Nobody laughing right, now. Right. Nobody laughing. Nobody laughing, but the move has been made, right? The, yeah. the, there's been a well, very big move. Not to say there won't be another one. We don't know. We don't know. We didn't get any. In we didn't get any insight on that. So, um, so what do you do? Did, what do you make of the whole Ianthus? Uh, it's kind of interesting. So Ianthus bought MPX and then parsed out the assets it didn't want, <laughs> and basically now Ianthus has eliminated MPX as a U.S. competitor, taken their property, and now it's a billion yeah. seven or something by the time it's all said and done. I think that's quite incredible. Well, you know what? Let's let's see how they've uh, fared today, and maybe uh, there'll be some uh, direction from our uh, observation. Some direction from our observation. You know, you're starting to talk a bit like you're from the East Coast, Ed. Do you know anybody from the East Coast? I'm from Eastern Poland. Really? I have a new friend in a place called. Portuguese Bay, St. Philip's, Newfoundland. Really? Which is just outside of St. John's, but he's a very nice fella. And his name, what? <laughs> you captured the location, Portugal's Cove, or Portugal's Cove. And, and you know what? And, we, we, and obviously we're going to hear from our in-house Portuguese now, lady. Now here's our, Portuguese. Oh, I guess we're not swinging cameras around over there. Anyway, so my new friend, let's start that again. My new friend is Thomas Herb Clark. Clark? Is it Clark? I can't yes, okay. So Thomas Herb Clark. Do you know what his initials stand for? THC. You know what he does? He sells weed in Newfoundland. He's he's the he's the vendor. Now wait a minute now. You're telling me his nickname is Herb? Or his middle his name? His middle name is Herb. Oh come on, Herb. His initials are Herb. THC. Herb. 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 Herbert. Herb. Herbie. Herb. Herb. Uh, let's roll up some herb. Let's roll up some herb. Hey, herb. And anyways, we talked to him today. He's out of marijuana. He's waiting for another shipment. Come on. Yeah, listen to him. I'll Here's what he says. Time. We've got a real special guest for you now. I've got Thomas H. Clark here, the proprietor of Thomas H. Clark Distribution based in Portugal, Cove, St. Phillips, Newfoundland. Thomas, you run a dispensary in Portugal, Cove, St. Phillips, Newfoundland. Is that correct? I do. I was actually the very first person in Canadian history to sell cannabis legally out of my licensed retail store in Portugal called St. Phillips. And my first customer was my father. Wow. Well, that's, uh, that's a bit of history there in and of itself. What's, uh, what's the population yeah, of Portugal's Cove? Well, uh, my shop is just eight minutes away from the St. John's International Airport. Oh. The population in Portugal Cove is between eight and 10,000 people. Uh, but the people of Belle Island had to drive through here to get their ferry. And I'm so close to St. John's that uh, this is going to be the most popular place to go on the Avalon, Avalon Peninsula here in Newfoundland. Interesting. And I understand that you're out of cannabis. I am, sir. Uh, I ordered seventy thousand dollars worth of cannabis from one of the licensed producers, and when my first shipment showed up, it was only less than twenty percent of my order. Uh, I opened at midnight till two a.m. and at that time, all my pre rolls were sold. Uh, I opened up again nine o'clock that morning, and believe it or not, I sold out at exactly four twenty the first day. So that's a bit of an eye for you. Boy, your life is a your life is a series of coincidences, isn't it? Oh yes, yeah, so I've had so much international media attention this week. Today there's an article on the High Times homepage. Yesterday I was on the Rolling Stone homepage. Uh, I've been on BBC World News and International Radio France and all the stations across Canada. Uh, I've spent more time talking to journalists than doing anything with my business the last few days. Well, I guess that's a good thing. You don't have any cannabis to sell anyway. When do you expect to get some cannabis again? Well, I just found out that uh, the, the product that I want to have the most is Broken Coast Cannabis. And I'm going to have them in stock. Uh, they should be flown out here and here by Monday, if not Tuesday for sure. Uh, I should be restocked by Canopy Growth between now and then, and hopefully uh, Aurora will have some stuff for me, and Organogram as well. 
Okay, which of the cannabises that you carry is the best according to your customers? Uh, according to my customers, the cannabis that I had in, out of the cannabis that I first had in stock, which was uh, the Aurora and the Canopy strains, uh, a lot of people like the Aces, the uh, Indica pre-rolls from, from Aurora, and uh, a lot of people like the Coffee Fondue from uh, DNA Genetics, which is a Canopy product. Ah, okay. And so, so far you've only had to, to, uh, the chance to carry those two products, but you want to carry Broken Coast. What is so attractive about Broken Coast? Well, I mean, Broken Coast has been a, a craft grower out on Victoria Island for a long time. And in the legal market, their, uh, their cannabis is the top-notch quality. You know, uh, it's, it's grown with love. It's grown uh, uh, in small quantities. It's hand-trimmed and, and cured. Uh, to me, in the legal market, it is probably going to be uh, your number one cannabis. You know, there's a lot of uh, differences in price range. People who are going to spend money and want a quality cannabis, I think that Broken Coast is what they're going to go for here. Uh-huh. Are there any other cannabis stores in your town? Not in Portugal Cove, but in the surrounding area. In Newfoundland, we opened 20 stores on the first day. Uh, we were the province with, I think, the most, definitely per capita, you know, there's only 500,000 Newfoundlanders, and, you know, so we have 20 stores across the island. So I think the province of Newfoundland is ahead of the game. You know, I, I personally have a trademark called the Wild Newfoundland Blueberry Cannabis Company, and I'm trying to find investors or licensed producers who would like to go on business with me to grow five or six different strains of blueberry cross weeds with others and grow it with some iceberg water right here in Newfoundland, and then you can market it as blueberry, wild Newfoundland blueberry cannabis grown with the oldest, freshest water in the world. So I just need someone to get on board with me and want to come along for this journey that I'm going to be on. Huh, how do you get the water off the icebergs? Oh, there are a couple of, there's a couple of different iceberg harvesters here in Newfoundland who can actually have their boats set up for harvesting icebergs. So then when you're, uh, when you're filling up your, your tanks of water for feeding your cannabis, you use so much of that water mixed in with it before you do your pH testing and stuff. And it'll be uh, the freshest, oldest, cleanest water in the world fed to your plants. You can't go wrong with marketing like that. Huh. And it'll be top product because the strings that we would collect would be the best ones for the marketplace. Another thing is that's what my customers have been telling me. A lot of the cannabis that they've been purchasing here in Newfoundland has been really dry. Uh, seemed like it might have been kicking around for quite some time or problems with the curing process. Uh, I don't think they heard of a Boveda Fresh Pack. Everyone who comes in to me today, I'm saying, we don't have any cannabis available, but I'm pretty sure when we do, it's going to be too dry. So here's a free Boveda Freshness Pack for when they do come in. Hmm. Well, that's fascinating, Thomas. So I'm going to call you every once in a while and see how you're making out out there in Portugal Cove, St. Phillips. And uh, very nice to talk to you. And I'm going to come and visit you at your store one day, if you don't mind. Sounds good to me. And you can check me out on Twitter at TH Clarks. Or I also have my website, which will be up and running soon. It's thcdistribution.ca. It should be up in about a week or so. I wanted to have all my products on it before I launched it. Yeah. Okay, great. Thomas, well, thank you very much for your time. Oh, thanks for having me. Have a great day. That's it? Yes? Was that? Ar, 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 What did you think of that, Ed? We're out of cannabis out there on the East Coast. Did you hear what he said? We're out of cannabis I'm on the East to, Coast. I'm trying to remember what he said, but I can't because he was screaming in my ear. He wants more weed. He needs more weed. They need more weed in Newfoundland. Isn't it interesting? Did you see all the stories? It seems to me that everybody who lined up for cannabis at a store either got burned or had to stand in line for half the day. But if you bought online in the Ontario Cannabis Store, what happened? Click, click, click. You click here. You pick your THC there. And yeah. I see the, uh, the mayor of Toronto wants, uh, wants the uh, legal people to be a little more 
the legal people. Well, he, he's saying that the, the uh, it, uh, what do you call these things? Uh, dispensaries? Dispensaries, they should be shut down. The legal ones? Well, they're not, they're not legal. There's the no illegal legal. dispensaries. Well, well there's, that's there's only illegal dispensaries. There's no illegal ones yet. There's, so there's Online's not a dispensary. Well, technically it is. No, it's not. Are they dispensing no, cannabis? No, 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 no. What do you mean? No, Where's no, it gonna come no. From? Where's no, it gonna come no. from? Where is it gonna come from? Where's it gonna come from? Where's it gonna come from? Well, it's not gonna come by a bloody stork. It comes in the mail, just like the cannabis from the illegal dispensaries that are called LPs. What the hell's he doing here? You, who invited him? Which, when do you leave to California? Sunday, Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Sunday morning, la da, la da. Never mind. Okay. Anyways, don't give up my day job. I hear it all the time. All right. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Fine. Fine, fine. Anyways, um, you know, we don't really have that much time left and I really have uh, some other guests that I'd like to bring on. Next week? No, right now. George Scorsis from Liberty Health Sciences is here, and here's what George had to say today. Hey, ho, and a ding, ding, do. Look who's here. It's George Scorsis, CEO and director of Liberty Health Sciences, Inc., trading on the CSE under the symbol LHS. George, welcome back. Happy to be here. What the hell is going on with Liberty Health? Your stock is climbing. You're knocking out press releases. It looks like you're trying to take over the world down there in Florida. Yeah, you know, we've... Uh We've been focused on Florida and mm -hmm. continuously being the best in now the state. Now that November is here, I'm going to be a regular guest. Well, thanks. I know you enjoy golf. <laughs> yes. So, so with that, I would love to have you down there. But we have really had some uh, great developments. We partnered with Adaviv, which is a technology platform to really pursue um, what I would call the next level of cultivation. Hmm. Uh, we have also expanded our footprint. We just received word in Ohio that we have received a provisional license for um, extraction and processing. So another state to knock off. And class, uh, one, class one or two in Ohio. It's actually the extraction and processing that oh, we received. Perfect. Better yeah. yet. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So things are moving forward. What's uh, what's happening in the state of Florida as regards recreational cannabis versus medical at this point? Yeah, still completely medical. So right. we're building out our medical platform and trying to be the best medical provider of cannabis. We're fairly confident in 2020 that the state will pursue adult use. So it's really about operational excellence, building um, what I would say the back of the house to be able to support that, mm -hmm. uh, increasing our retail footprint. In the next month, we have another three dispensaries opening, which is in Florida, uh, in Florida which is going to be great. We'll be up to seven, 10 by the end of this year. Another, tw uh, we'll have 12 by the end of February. So we're really ramping up. Cool. And how, uh, how soon till Ohio comes on stream as a revenue source? Ohio, we will have extraction done within the next six months. We also have a dispensary that we're building out. We have a great partnership with the Schottenstein family in that state, mm. um, which is a juggernaut in the state and really is going to help us support us to navigate within the state. Sure. Well, that's yeah. just right across the lake from Leamington, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a coincidence. <laughs> what a happy coincidence that is. <laughs> so, uh, um, you, uh, so you're building out Florida. What's the capacity of Florida at this point in terms of production? We will have 13,000 kilograms um, capacity annualized. That's more than I can smoke in a year. Well, I think you've gone there. <laughs> so we will be uh, close to 13,000 kilograms and that will be able to service roughly 131,000 patients. Hmm. So we're overbuilding. Mm -hmm. um, because we're anticipating adult use to come into the market. You do it once and you do it right. And uh, we're really focused on expanding our cultivation footprint there. Oh, that's great. I know that I will spend a lot more time in Miami when I can buy recreational cannabis there <laughs> during my winter visits. Uh, I'll never leave that beach again. So you've got Ohio, you've got Florida. What other sort of states are you looking at? You mentioned a couple, but uh, we, did, we weren't really in a position where you could talk about them yet. Has any of that moved forward into solidification? Yep, so Massachusetts we still haven't closed on, but we are very bullish on that market. New Jersey, we have an application in place. Um, hopefully that pans out very well, and we are looking at other states. Mm -hmm. And I would say where we are focused um, exclusively on the Northeast, we're more open to other states. Um, other states that really are commercially feasible, that really our skill set could be applied and be successful in the region or be one of the dominant players. So I think you'll see some news coming up. Okay, well, that's, I'm excited. I'm excited. What are the big catalysts coming up in the next year? It's really about keeping our head down and focusing. Um, 
you know, I do believe that there's going to be regulatory changes that are going to support what all of us are doing in the United States. I think investor interest is definitely shifting. We're seeing some interesting plays um, in the U.S. where there's not just roll-ups, there's not just multi-state, um, what I would say, producers, but you're seeing multi-state producers acquiring other multi-state producers. So it is a land grab. Mm -hmm. We've taken a little bit of a different approach where we're really focusing on making sure we have the best operation, being more methodical, disciplined with our approach. We may not be the biggest in our footprint, but we are going to be the most disciplined in making sure we have the best operation within every state that we go into. Sure. I saw a somewhat, uh, I'm going to say, under-researched piece in Bloomberg that suggested that the Canadian cannabis market will only enjoy this time of dominance in the sun temporarily because once America comes on, Canada will not be able to withstand the awful onslaught of the American brand machine. And I thought, boy, that strikes me as awfully naive because the best mm -hmm. defense against competition is market share, which Canadians certainly do. Case in point, Liberty Health Sciences in Florida, now Ohio, soon to be Massachusetts and these other places. So. Are you concerned at all that federal deprohibition in the U.S., should it ever arrive, is going to constitute an imminent threat to what you're doing right now? No, I think it's going to be more access to capital and there's going to be more interest and eyes from the Canadian LPs to come down to the U.S. We're already seeing it. We're seeing it with Canopy. We're seeing it with AFRIA when we initially launched with Liberty Health Sciences, Aurora. I do believe that opening up those boundaries is, is actually going to be beneficial to all of us. There's going to be more consolidation, but I also do believe you're going to see consolidation the other way. You're going to see American producers acquiring Canadian, potentially. Hmm. And I think that will be the first time that we've ever seen the Canadians lose a dominant position within the space. Really? So do you think then that deprohibition is going to constitute an uh, amp up in valuations of the whole sector? Absolutely. That's huh. why we're jumping in now. Right. Well, that's great. So you're obviously in the camp that doesn't believe that, as some of the naysayers are, that the proliferation of cannabis companies, both sides of the border now, is going to make it tougher to find quality experiences for investors, you're more of the impression that this is a big market, we're an inch into a marathon, as Sean McDulty said the other day, I, I love that expression, and uh, it's early days. Yep, it's early days. That's why all of us are jumping in right now, mm -hmm. all of us. Um, the U.S. will be the biggest market in the world, hmm. although there's been a lot of discussion about Latin America, Europe, and Canada, obvious, for obvious reasons. The U.S. will be the biggest market. Um, I come from beverage alcohol. And whether it be beverage, whether it be cigarettes, whether it be anything else, pharmaceutical, the U.S. is where you want to win. Hmm. And that's why we're all jumping into that space. Okay. Um, do you have any sort of preparations underway for the advent of beverages, edibles in Florida, be they medical or eventually recreational? Yeah, we're focusing heavily on uh, technology and innovation. We have water-soluble technologies. We also have new cultivation processes that we've brought in to be able to to ultimately make us um, one of the lowest cost producers, but also to ensure that if anyone were to come into the space and want to partner with us, they'd be satisf satisfied with our processes. So we do have technologies that we're going to be releasing the next uh, while mm -hmm. in within Florida, because that will be our test market. And I think that'll really demonstrate how far ahead we're looking within the innovation space. Sure. Do you think that the advent of biosynthesis in terms of growing cannabinoids from genetically mm -hmm. modified yeasts uh, represents any kind of threat to the cultivator market? No, I think we got to look at it. You know, I think, I think that we all need to acknowledge there is going to be different ways for cannabinoids to be developed and created. Um, you know, I think it's going to come down to a cost structure at the end of the day. I think it will be just an input material. You're going to see massive, massive compression on anyone who's simply a cultivator. Mm -hmm. And I think those that are looking at verticals or retail or processing will be the ones that win in the long term. But I think right now you need to be a completely vertical engine. And that's how we really work within the business. Retail will never go away. Right. Um, everyone thought the internet was going to crush retail. Mm -hmm. It's still here. It's right. still vibrant. Dispensaries are still doing well. So it may be a different input material, but if you own that license at retail, there's still plenty of room to play. CBDs are legal in some way, shape, or form mm -hmm. in almost every state, X of cannabis. How is that consolidated? How is that sort of uh, reconciled in the legal structure that says cannabis is 
federally prohibited. Yeah, every state has different policy. Um, many of them, although they acknowledge or allow for CBD to be sold, it generally is not within the same framework as what I would call the MMJ policies that are in the state. Yeah. So they're actually not working together cohesively. I think ultimately that's what we need to see really work. Because um, right now they're, they're not working to benefit ultimately the patient. If hemp was permitted to work alongside many of these MMJ systems, then it would be great because you would get um, what would be a cheaper input material, mm -hmm. potentially. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you got to keep in mind, most of the medical marijuana frameworks that are put in place are highly regulated. I don't want to diminish what hemp has done, but it is not highly regulated at this point. In order for you to give something to a patient, to a consumer, you need to have highly regulated marketplaces to protect them. Um, so we would like for them to work in concert with each other. Okay. And uh, we're not seeing that right now in the US. Hmm. All right, so um, we're gonna leave it there for now, George. That's a great update. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Up there. What do you make of Liberty Health there, Ed? Good. Just moving right along. Knocking it out of the park down Just, there uh, in you Florida, know. Ohio. Florida in Ohio. Whoa! Boy, let's take a look at the market. You know what we really haven't done much of today yet? Yeah. Right? Let's charts. look at the market. I haven't looked at the charts. Look at the charts. You got to have your charts, Ed. Where's your charts? So a technical guy with no charts? That doesn't Not make any sense. Not much of a sense. technical guy. As Not as very concerned. technical whatsoever in, the, in nature, one might say. So, anyways. We're going to start with the, I want to see what's going on with the CSE. What's driving the CSE higher? Uh, because that's been really kind of let's interesting. Let's see, yeah, let's see. Is it still up? Look at this, Koyus Beverage, up 11 cents yeah. KBEV. Koyus Beverage. KBEV. KBEV. Yeah. And how many shares are, uh, how many shares did that trade today? Just I like. couldn't tell you. Let's take a quick look. Uh, I saw Body and Mind on the list. That was uh, yep. that's your buddy uh, Clough. Yeah, Leonard uh, was in town the last couple of days. He was at the the uh, Canaccord U.S. Investment Cannabis Investment uh, Summit yesterday. So is that a dead cat bounce on the uh, on the? No, I think this is a reversal predicated on the fact that they are going to start to uh, you know get out there and tell the story. Was my understanding? Really? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think. I think this might be one of the bigger up-and-coming beverage companies that's quite advanced. Oh, how do you pronounce that? Coyos. 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 Coyos beverage. KBEV. Yeah. I like the symbol. Nice and easy to remember. KBEV. Yeah. Okay. But that's one that we'll be looking at let's, next week. Let's, there's a number here. I, I, I'm, I'm seeing new numbers on certain, uh, on, uh, certain Look at issuers. Look Leviathan. Look at it, Viathan up 14 cents. Some of these things are just flying. Body and Mind was up 8 cents to 81 cents. That's interesting. They, uh, Leonard announced his big expansion this week. That'll be up on our on-demand section if you want to find out what's happening in Las Vegas. And Power Clinics up. Look at this. Lots is up on the look CSE. At, look at, why are they, they're all up on the CSE? Yeah. You know why? Because they're all down Look on the large Look at Emmer Health I saw today under $4. I don't think I've seen that under $4 in quite a while. Let's just take a look at that one. Which one? Emerald Health. Emerald Health, what? E-M-H, I believe. E-M-H. E-M-H. Sucking hind tit. Look okay, no, I guess I, I, I stand Dropping corrected. Like it was rock. down at 250 there recently so now i want to talk for a moment about our client of course wayland okay so wayland uh look at that dollar 65. how low do you think it's going to go ed before we do the big reversal hey hey yeah well that's that's a uh this company like this harvest results reported from germany They've harvested 135 hectares of cannabis. Now, the interesting thing is uh, they're calling it hemp, but hemp is cannabis and cannabis is hemp, so there's really no difference. Um, I guess the difference when they call it hemp, they're implying that it has a low THC count, so they're growing this stuff. But that's $30 million worth of uh, hemp they just harvested. How much? $30 million worth. $30 million, and what's the company worth? 
120,000, Ed, where's your calculator? Quick calculation, 120,615 <laughs> times 135, no, times, let's see, times You know what I need? 9, I need a visor. Euros. I need a visor. You need a visor with some magnifying and glasses on it. And probably I also need a financial advisor. Yeah, I'm going to do a quick calculation, never mind. Uh, let's see, 120. Well, you got to get your calculator out. Though, well, let's see, no, though. But is this uh, a total of 3,000 of dried have been extracted to date from which 450 kilograms for further distillation? Okay, so is that the amount of hemp dry flowers recovered and suitable for processing into resin total 120,615 kilograms? Now, are those wet kilograms or dry kilograms? We're going to assume dry. Uh, you think a dry kilogram weighs less than a wet kilogram? I think so. I think so they weigh the same. Video in here. Kilograms, kilogram. <laughs> kilograms, a kilogram. Ha ha ha. All right. Look at this thing. Look at this. Oh, look at this. let's go. Look at this. this is thing. The harvest is on. That's the hemp harvester in Germany. Can you believe they used that to help? Look at look at the size of those hemp things. So it's taking the flowers off the top and spitting the stalks out the back, eh? Really. Well, that's what I see happening. Oh, look, I'm going to run forward here. Oh, there's a couple of oh, people in the fields. Oh, there's some people out there stealing some of the... Yeah, making off with the sticks. Some of the snow or peas have the, the fall faggots. off the truck. Stealing the faggots, bundling, tying them up into little faggots and running off with them. What are you talking about? Faggots, a bundle of sticks. That so was a bunch of... You, what? what I've never heard you of got that a word. problem with... You, you've never heard the term faggot. <laughs> <laughs> Ed, a faggot is a bundle of sticks. Okay. Okay. Jesus. Don't Jesus, look at me like that. Jesus Christo. God. I, damn I, I never, okay, so you caught me one. Like, so the score right now is 10 to 1 on, go. on the word thing. Is that 10 oh, to 1? Yeah, well, I've, I've only been keeping track because it's in my in best interest. Oh, okay. So, so oh, you mean in new words? The new word look. Anyways, so there we go. Look at, look at Kronos. Kronos? They're not a client. Why do we care? You don't care. I don't care. I don't care about Kronos. Actually, it's silly to say I don't care about companies that aren't clients because I do I, care about them. Because, because they could become clients. They could become clients. Exactly. Jesus. And we have a pretty solid marketing team now, and we are actually the most influential website in cannabis investing in the world. Did you know that? Did you know that, Ed? That's four. Well, when you tell me, it CNN, must be true. CNBC okay. says all. Okay. It's true. It's true. It's not fake news. Um, so, what do you think the uh, what do you think the week's looking like next week? Let me let me just look into my crystal ball here. Just a minute. Okay. Like, uh, let's pull up these indices. Actually, let's tell you what. Here's what are you going to do? With something really. Flour. Look at flour. Flour. We're going to look pounded. at the uh, pounded. We're going to look at the market movers here. Uh, let's see on the TSX Venture. Look at Relique Health back up to seventy cents. How are you, how are you feeling about that, Fraser? Bet you that's the last time you listen to me. Seventy cents, eh? That's a nice. That's a big reversal. Yeah. I guess what the financials weren't that bad. I don't know. I haven't. I, I haven't been following the uh, fundamental. Uh, Namaste still down there at two twenty two. Superior Gold, Oxley Cannabis, buck seventeen. That was up at a buck sixty. Boy, they really jerked that thing around. They eh? oh, up yeah. down, up down, up down. True North Gems. Boy, there's a relic from the past. Look at that sucking absolute. That's one that's well. Can I guess we that's can we show. put it up by uh, percentage change? No. Nope, not on this window, not on the market okay. movers window. Okay. I'd have to go to another one. I don't know which one. Let's take a look at the CSE stocks. Uh, biggest volume trader, Belgravia Capital, but it's only a three center, so it doesn't really count. FSD Pharma, 59 cents. I bought 100,000 shares of that. Tur apparently, BMO investor lines only open until 3.45 in the afternoon. After that, they don't execute trades. You think it's time for a new investment account? I think some so. capital's moving big. Quinsome. That's funny. They had a board meeting here, didn't they, recently? Where do you see Quinsome Capital, Ed? Right there. Oh, yeah. No, oh, that's open 37. source. YOLO. YOLO. YOLO's 25 and a half. Ooh. Is that a new low for YOLO? Um, sort of. No, not really. It opened at 20. So technically, no. MGX Minerals. Boy, that one's taking it on the chin. 
That's up 11 today. Yeah. That's taking it. Up. And let's finally let's look at what's going on on the big board here. Aurora Cannabis shed 75 cents down to $13 and one penny. Do you think that might have something to do with the fact that we're no longer helping them? <laughs> Which one? Aurora. Aurora. You're not helping them anymore? Ah, uh, well, we're we're on hiatus. They're waiting to see <laughs> they're waiting to see the absence of our effect to determine whether they want to continue with our our assistance. Right. Afria. Afria is down $1.15. dollar fifteen. Eighteen thirty. Hexo's down. So again, these are all the guys on the big board. So the big board's sucking hind tit today, and uh, and that's all we have to say about that. What about some of our mining issuers, eh? Whatever happened to GLDN? Done and done and done and done. Yeah, but you know what? That, that, that historically has been a, a good buy when it's down. So, so what do you think about next week, Ed? Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? Is it going to go sideways? Absent a big value catalyst, I think we're in for more little sideways I think dripping. it's going to be sideways to slightly lower. Sideways elevator. Sideways elevator. Okay, so Anyways, that you concludes know our show. That concludes our week. That concludes the historic week in Canada's history. No more getting busted for smoking the dope. That bullshit. And now we can smoke it legally. And if you ordered from online, we'll be interested to hear from you about when you get your cannabis. I have some cannabis coming from Ontario Cannabis Store. It said one to three days. Third day would be Saturday. Fourth day would be Sunday. I'm out of town. So I'm going to have my boy bring the cannabis here. And Ed, you're going to have to tell me if the cannabis is any good. Okay. Anyways, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and so all that stuff. Can we stuff. smoke right on the show? Nope. Can't smoke in the building. It's a non-smoking building. We, if we went outside, though, in a smoking area. You could smoke out front. Yeah. Nine meters away from a door. Okay. That's all for now. Thank you, guys. Have a great week. We'll see you next week.